Welcome back, friends. Last guy here, and it's time for a look at this unfortunate situation. Here we are in the Great Ace Attorney, and I really, really need to oil this chair. All right, let's go. Good Lord, it's it's the defendant, Miss Judah Lestrade. Oh no! Also, don't those guys look like they're wearing freaking what do you call it? One piece jackets. As the court can clearly see. The accused is a pictured, gun in hand, facing the victim over the shop counter. No doubt coercing the prep proprietor to open the door to his storeroom. Quiet. Uh, quite. One can only too easily imagine the events that unfolded. The court will take this photographic print as evidence, if you please, counsel. All right, let's take a look. Huh? Take a look. All right, so that's a bad. Her fingers on the trigger. Guns up. Okay. Well, we can't see any of this. There's that cat thing there. Other things. So how's this gonna be relevant later? Becomes my question. Ask the question there. I don't believe it! Kenny! In short... The accused is the only person who could possibly have killed Mr. Windybank. Ah! Yeah, that's not good! <laughs> I say, my lord! It's gonna be him, isn't it? Yep! Wonder if I might put in a word at this point? Go ahead, Mr. Foreman. Took a bally bullet to the knee in the Battle of Maywand, uh, 1880, don't you know? Decorated for it and all that, but forced to retire from service, sadly. Of course, a medal can never outshine the exploits of chaps like us on the battlefield. Yes, Mr. Foreman, and what exactly is your point? Carried on the battle after retirement, you see? The Battle of Daily Life, if you like. And here I am now, leading this small squadron. Six men all good and true. And we'll all go down together, you'll mark my words. One for all and all for one. Okay... <laughs> are we gonna just do the guilties right here? I think we are, aren't we? Then ladies and gentlemen of the jury... The ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached agreement, have they? Is that what we are to understand? Well, Mr. Foreman, is that correct? Hmm... In a manner of speaking, yes. That is the Garadip Squadron's position, sir. What? No! It's too soon to make a judgment here. Status support for the court, men! On the double! His lordship insists on promptitude at all times, and that goes for making decisions, too. I think you'll find the truth is as clear as day now. I could reach out and touch it. Like he's got those picture things. I wouldn't have left it in there. I just wouldn't. But in all honesty, I can't actually remember. Situation clear, stop. No room for doubt, stop. Truth now undeniable, stop. I am very sorry for brothers. They are unlucky. Very well! I am now- I now call upon each member of the jury to state his or her leanings in this matter. Announce your considered vi verdicts to the court. We're not gonna hear the actual voices. Here we go. Guilty. Okay. Guilty. Okay. Guilty. Really? Guilty. Oh, that's the voice, right? Guilty. That's her voice? Guilty. Yeah, that voice is perfect. It's the only one I like. That six one was good. Fook. Here we go. Here we go. It does indeed appear that the jury is unanimous in its leanings today. Already? Oh, phone. Okay. I know that's how these games go, but it, it's just weird that every time these guys have to deal with just a stacked deck. It would be interesting to have a back and forth instead of a stacked deck every case, right? Alright, let's go. That photograph! It must be the definitive evidence that Gregson mentioned. But Kenny didn't shoot him! No, of course not. My lord. The defense wishes to assert its right to summation examination. 
Very well, the court grants permission. So, you refuse to admit defeat again. How unsurprising. We shall proceed immediately with the submission examination. Mr. Foreman, are all members of the jury ready? Absolutely, sir. Always ready for action, my chaps. Very good, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. Alright, get going. Ball's out. Here we go. The jury's contentions. Oh, the evidence clearly points the finger of guilt at this young pickpocket in air. As a housemaid, I should like to see all filthy eyesores properly and rigorously eliminated. I think you'll find that if you look at the photograph in stereo, the truth will just pop out. Okay. If I have left it in there, I, sh I should think there'll be repercussions by now. What the hell? Mine made up. Stop. Mobile radio transmission of verdict to follow. Stop. In Motherland, we say never judge by clothes, judge by head. I'm convinced. Brothers are innocent. The freaking little mouse. Hmm. The circumstances of the crime and the evidence do indeed implicate the defendant rather comprehensively. The storeroom locked from the inside in which the victim and the accused were discovered alone. Oh, check for that to check volume. Yeah, it's good. And in the accused hand, the fatal revolver, the firing of which was heard by these witnesses. Not to mention this print. Is he drunk? What's with the red face? Take it from a chap who's seen action on the battlefield. That young girl's on the verge of pulling the belly trigger. Thanks a lot, Mr. Sholmes. Oh dear, how these cameras were supposed to help. I hinder. I'm afraid I think you have an uphill struggle ahead of you. Like every time. But Gina didn't shoot Mr. Windybank. Which means there's more to the situation that we've yet to see. Agreed. But did, did you read his mind? You have the floor, Counsel. Proceed with the summation examination. Jury examination. Sort out, boys. The defense's re rebuttal. Hold it, hold it. Time to press. Hold it. You're not, Mr. You're Mr. landlord, Mr. Garadim, aren't you? We really must stop meeting like this. Hmm. Oh, you're that lawyer chap. Well, there's a turn up of the books. Yes, rather a turbulent time we had back then. Some extraordinary events took place at your house, that's for sure. Luckily, Mr. Sholmes and I were able to get to the bottom of, all, of it all. You murdered someone! <laughs> hmm. Oh no, they didn't murder anyone, they hurt her. Bad thing. I think we did rather a lot for you, didn't we? Hmm. I mean, obviously. I wouldn't be suggesting that, therefore, you should change your leaning to not guilty or anything. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Can't be denied, I suppose. The curse of the Garadim house was the talk of the town after that business. I gotta take my whistle a bit. Lodge has moved out and I couldn't get a belly soul to take up the tendencies. Oh, oh. Haven't had the heart to break the news to Joni yet. Bad enough that the old girl's clapped up. Yes, can't be denied. You did do rather a lot. But not for us, that's for dashed certain. I suppose not. Of course. There can be no suggestion of that being the reason I'm leading towards guilty here, obviously. Obviously, but honestly. I really wish you'd pay more attention to the trial and less to juror number two. Uh, wait, is he looking at her? Was he looking at her? What? I thought he was just... Hmm, yeah. He is looking at her! Oh, it's because she's a maid. I swear to God, if this is his daughter. He's just surrounded by maids. Let us press. It's like, ugh, what's my kid doing? Unless he's just into maids. Maybe he's got a maid fetish, there's also a thing. Polishing the bench? <laughs> polishing the bench, I see. Again, well, she's used to polishing many things, I'm sure. And maids work is never done. 
Not a blemish must remain. Um, what exactly do you mean by filthy eyesores? On my way to market this his, for his lordship, I have to pass through the east end. The place is full of beggars, pick purses, and crossmen. This come of the air. A little harsh, perhaps? Let him be plain. If it weren't for me, uh, if it were up to me, all those back slums would be made spick and span or eradicated. At least we have people like the Great Detective working to achieve these important goals. You're referring to Mr. Herlock Sholmes? That's right. I like to keep abreast of his exploits by reading Rance magazine in between my duties. He does wonders cleaning up London streets. In my opinion, he should be declared an honorary maid of the capital. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes? A maid? It's really quite unforgivable. Got our scum have the audacity to shoot our very greatest detective. Uh. Minor detail, it was the two brothers in the stand who shot Mr. Sholmes, not the defendant. A minor detail indeed. They're all got a scum as far as I'm concerned. Well, uh, yeah, it just might be a good idea to get our facts straight away anyway. Yes, alright. I shall amend my statement. Oh, hello! Those brothers are the scum of the earth. They should swing for shooting the great detective. Okay. Well, what if we press again? I agree with you. The shooting of Mr. Sholmes was an unforgivable act. But the purpose of this trial is to determine who shot the pawnbroker, Mr. Windybank. I'm afraid you're splitting hairs, sir. Sorry. Well, it was the thieves of the pig purse. It was still gutter trash that shot the pawnbroker in the end. I hope that should be cleaned up and eradicated, in my considered opinion. Thanks so much for sharing. Changing this maid's mind isn't going to be easy. Well, now. It was one of those two bars at Shahoe, wasn't it? Yes, without question. Hmm. Well, then. I'll never forgive him. Oh, Iris. Perhaps we can use this maid's statement to help us somehow, do you think? Yes, maybe. Let's listen carefully to each... What each juror has to say. Mm hmm. Oh, well, go. Okay, see. What? Wait, go back. What's the pictures he's got up there? Something. Hold it. What's with this guy with stereo? What do you mean, look at the photograph in stereo? Say, what? Don't, don't you know? If you look at the photograph, it can uh, print normally. It looks as though the pickpocket girl is about to shoot the victim, obviously. Objection. But there's no indication that the defendant ever fired the gun. All I'm saying is that if you look at the same print in stereo, it could reveal all sorts of new information. Uh, by any chance, are you a fan of stereoscopes? Ooh, how did you know? Oh right, he's crossing his eyes, I didn't notice that part. Let's call it a lucky guess. It never gets old seeing the two prints merge into one before your eyes. It's extraordinary, it's captivating, it's the height of modernity. Of course. Oh yes, I think you'll find that the stereoscope is here to stay. Giving us new perspectives we could only dream of before. It's the greatest invention the world has ever seen. If only it could give me a new perspective on this case, I might agree with you. I'm an old man. Here we go. I forgot the original voice again, this guy. Uh, what exactly have you been muttering about all this time, sir? You keep talking about having left something somewhere, or something like that. Ah, oh, so sorry. As you can probably tell, I'm a surgeon. A surgeon? That, to that totally passed me by. Of course, the people conducting surgery in this country aren't considered to be doctors, oh no. Even though me and my kind are at the forefront of medical science, the real brains in the field, he gets a new voice because I forgot the old one. So what is it that you think you've left behind? Oh, well, that's a little embarrassing, to be honest. You see, I was operating on someone yesterday, standard thing, went in through the abdomen. But when I had finished the procedure, I... well, I couldn't find my scalpel anywhere. Oh god, is it in Sholmes? What? Did he? Surely not. Exactly, surely not, you say it to yourself, don't you? Worrying, isn't it? That's what's been troubling me this whole time. 
Could I really have left my scalpel inside the fellow's belly? No, of course I couldn't! So, there you have it. Like I said, a little embarrassing, really. That's one way to put it. The other is manslaughter. That's exactly my concern, and seeing as this case appears to be all but sewn up, I need to focus on trying to remember exactly what I've sewn up elsewhere. Now, I'm sure I made sure everything was back as it should be. Well, as sure as you can be without being sure. I'm sure you need to be more sure. Oh, way more sure. My made up stop level train. Okay. Is she the spy? Jesus. Ma'am. Sorry, radio transmission. What do you mean? Are you from the Vice? Stop. Um, yes, from the Empire of Japan. All communication for Far East nations used to take place by mail. Royal mail steamers take more than a month to complete the trot journey. Ah, but now we have your electric telegram, so we can send messages using electric signals. Thousands of miles of cables have been weighed along the ocean beds, connecting the entire world. I did not know they did that in the 18-somethings. That was a monster cable? An ocean bed? Makes my head hurt just thinking about it. Yeah, they're not using radio waves, are they? Okay, sure, they're using wires. Yeah, it's called the wire. Huh! I didn't know they did that back then. You are all informed, young lady. Hee <laughs> hee! But cables still soon become a thing of the past, stop. This is when I was starting to catch up. Like, they used... Like, this was a short range, and then you have cables for the long range, right? Like, all right. Radio transmissions in this... Ah, oh, we're here! Alright, yeah, we're doing radio transmissions. Radio transmissions in this is the future. Stop. This is just carried over airways to four corners of the globe. Stop. You need a lot of repeaters for that, though. Excitement growing. Stop. Atmosphere. Electric. Stop. Right. Try not to wear out your fingers. Aero wireless telegram. Stop. Driving technological revolution. Stop. And people say inventions like the stereoscope are the height of technology. What other piffle? She's not wrong, telegrams are pretty important. I can't understand it, I really can't. Hmm. They're just silly toys. Oh! -ho -ho! Ooh, okay, we'll address that in a bit. Let's get the six first. Don't spare any feelings, will you? It's not like there's anyone here who likes stereoscopes. So, why exactly do you think the defendant is guilty? It's quite simple. We haven't been shown a scrap of evidence to suggest that she isn't the culprit. And just as radio waves dash through the skies faster than the eye can see. So we should dash the conclusion of this trial and stop pandering in indecision. Okay. Indecision. In Motherland, we say never judge by clothes, judge by head. I am convinced. Convinced. B brothers are innocent. Convinced. So W is a V. In Russia. Like, uh, like Wagner is Wagner. Like Wagner. Like, uh, what, what is, what is, what was he? Like musician? I forget what he is all of a sudden. Wait, isn't that a... Oh my god, I think it's the first name of a certain musician. I'm trying to figure it right now. But Wagner is, is Wagner. So W's and V's are kind of close to each other in that language. So that's why they switched the V with a W there. Cultural explanation. Let's press. Please tell me you're not the villain. <laughs> villain Bolshevik. The Russian revolutionary. <laughs> revolutionary? Hmm. Uh, I believe there is such a rumor. It's just a rumor. As you can see, I'm unfortunate appearance. I have unfortunate appearance. I look like a vicious uh, criminal. That's why it's they say nuclear vessels. They said nuclear vessels, but it's the V and W are like it's like R's and L's. It's like that kind of thing. Your words, not mine. Just wanna point that out. People call me a revolutionary, murderer, an autocrat, and and which glove fits? Look, good day. I'm visiting London for. Uh, sightseeing. I would like to take past the Crystal Tower, please. Mm hmm Right, that didn't sound staged at all. You'll forgive me for having my doubts. To be treated like a vicious criminal all the time, it is very painful. 
People do not realize. So I have much sympathies for these brothers. People say they are criminals only because of how they look. The Skulkin brothers? Duh, maybe they went inside Pawnbroker's shop. But they have done nothing wrong. That is all I want to say. The Skulkin brothers did nothing wrong that night. Ah, oh, him the maid. Alright, well, first of all... That's one not-so-little misunderstanding I'll need to clear up straight away. Tell me something, Iris. Hmm? What is it, Warner? The jurors are chosen at random from the inhabitants of London Town, aren't they? Yes. It's amazing, isn't it? In that case... How is it that there's a Russian tourist sitting among them who looks for all the world like a revolutionary? I wish I knew. <laughs> what the balls, Linda. If I can't change the minds of more than half these six jurors, the trial will be over. But we know a guinea would never shoot anyone. Yes, well, so we need to find contradictions in what these jurors are saying and pit them against each other. I must be ready to go to whatever lengths I have to convince them of Gina's innocence. I'm a guy. Okay, let's go ahead and do the, uh... Bup, 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 bup. There we go. I assume one and four we can't do anything with, but this we can do something with. Ah. Get to it. Catch your mom. Where is it? 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 Here it comes! Here it comes! There it is! There it is! He's like, bitch! <laughs> hey, buddy! Excuse me! Um, jar number three? Sorry to interrupt when you're obviously fuming, but... What? You perhaps have something to say about juror number five's last remark? As if I couldn't guess? <laughs> oh, you bet I do! Say that again! Go on! I dare you! Goodness, are you talking to me? I think you just might be, yes. You think stereoscopes are just toys, do you? Huh? They kinda are. They are novelty. Absolutely, I mean really. A machine to view photographs in three dimensions. Why on earth would you not just use your eyes to look at the world around you? It's all three-dimensional. What a great way to appease the man. No, I'm sorry. Stereoscopes are of no practical use at all. Yeah, I'm curious what the practical use is, actually. Besides entertainment. Hmm. You just don't know. Pardon? I think you'll find that viewing a photograph through a stereoscope can unlock all sorts of possibilities. I'm obviously going to have to demonstrate. Ah, oh, here we go. What sort of possibilities? Well, take a crime scene, for example. If you had a pair of photographs from a crime scene that you could view through a stereoscope, it could reveal hidden clues you'd never even noticed before. What? Have you got any one of them? Any points we can look at with a stereoscope? Absolutely! How about this print here? It should do the trick, I think. Yeah, let's just do the one. Present! Alright then, juror number three. Are you saying you can do this with any two suitable photographic prints? Of course you can. Very well then, I'd like you to demonstrate. I'd, I'd be led to. Just give me one more print and I'll amaze you all. Ah, balls! Okay, I did the wrong one then, because what can I do with this? Can I go back? Can I go back? I want to go back. <laughs> oh my god, where can I do this? That ain't gonna do anything. I wouldn't get if I used these, right? I should have done these instead. Can I can I just go back? Can I go back on this? Ah, oh, balls. Give it to him again. Take that. that one. Wait, sorry? What do you mean, one more print? <laughs> right? There it is. Oh dear, oh dear. Don't you have these in the Far East? Don't you know how a stereoscope works? Oh no. What? 
We need two photographs for stereoscopes, remember? There they are, thank you! You know, one for the left eye and one for the right. Oh, oh yes, I remember now. But the print we have from the pawnbroker is just a normal photograph. No, 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 no. I think you'll find. But the clue is in the name. It's a stereoscope, not a monoscope. You always need two prints. Thanks for the friendly room explanation. Hmm. Oh, the other the other camera shot of the one o'clock, right? Well, if we obtained another print at some point later in the trial, we can always show it to this young man, then. <laughs> I think you'll find that know-it-all expression is really starting to annoy me. Let's get this thing... Let's get things back on track, shall we, Council? Okay, so something we do is going to reveal another shot. But for now, let's go ahead and get these two up, up against each other. Pit. Get him. Go. These two statements clearly contradict each other. Let's do that again, because that was not the right emotion there. These two statements clearly contradict each other. There we go. Good lord. Council, explain yourself. I'm not doing enough pauses, I gotta work on that. Oh my, my statement? Contradictory? Contradict-a-c-o-n-n... <laughs> Jury number six, you've got the wrong end of the stick. I do not have the stick, I have mouse. <laughs> As juror number two said earlier, when the Skulkin brothers play the scene on the night in question, they fired a shot from the revolver. Yes, they shot poor Mr. Sholmes in the abdomen. I understand. Surely you're not going to tell the court now that you didn't hear? Hmm. Abdomen. Abdomen. Ah, uh, but, uh... APD, sir. Sorry, sorry, uh, my English is still learning. Hmm. You are telling the court you didn't hear? It's it, it. Forgive me, I did not hear. Ugh. Ah, here it is, word. Abdomen. Part of person's body containing stomach and other vital organs. If this is what you mean, you should say in plain English. I am Russian, not native speaker. Who thought it was a good idea to let this man be on the jury again? Mouse. So, you are telling me these brothers who looked like criminals were lying? They said before, we never done nothing. The truth is, they shot Detective. Da, ah, this is double negative. Yes, that's exactly right! Lying is wrong, especially when lie is said by a person who looks like criminal. Poor Mouse. Coming from you, that seems surprisingly prejudiced. This means... When they said we never took nothing, maybe it was also a big fat lie. Is this true? Well, according to the police report, no stolen goods were found, so... Enough! I trust no one now! <laughs> it's not the mouse's fault, though, sir. I must see with own eyes. I must investigate crime scene myself. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Yes, it is, Wono. Easily! Sorry. With the points of Howie's white handed recorder. This is what we were trying to do, okay. Ah! If you compare the point that pictures Guinea and the next point from half an hour later, they'll be able to see straight away if anything was taken or not. Oh yeah, this is a cheat I just learned about. If you do the uh, hidden object games kind of thing, all you gotta do is get them side by side and stereoscope them, and you can easily pick out where all the hit, where all the uh, different things are from the p different pictures. Like, what's different from this picture between this one and this one? Hidden object's the wrong way to put it. But they do do that. They also do hidden object in the comparison thing. Cooey! Mr. Puss Prosecutor! Cooey? Who's Cooey? Cooey! Mr. Prosecutor! Tut tut, calling on the prosecution in the middle of a summation examination of all times. 
The print showing the accused threatening the victim after she broke into the shop is this one. Following this, the victim and the accused moved into the storeroom. Meanwhile, the Skullkin brothers entered the shop and summarily heard the fatal gunshot ring out. Sadly, none of these events were captured on film. This is the print produced by the camera half an hour later, after the brothers' flight. Now we can stereoscope. So this was taken at the hell it was shot then. As far as I can tell. Never has been taken. There's a slight movement, okay. That doesn't seem to be the case. That does seem to be the case. I can't notice anything that's obviously missing in the second print. Now we can go to that guy. So the brothers who look like criminals told only one lie. They shot men, but they stole nothing. It would seem so, yes. Good. No, not good. You were right. I did not understand situation. Now I know brothers have lied. I think it is very important to continue a trial. Woo! Got him! Alright, that's one. Woo! Thank you. Yay! Well done, Wano. The balance is shifting. Well, it's a start, I suppose. But there must be more on what these jurors are saying that I can use to expose the truth. Now I can do that. We just might turn the situation to our favor still. Thank you, Cancel. Continue with the summation examination. And kindly hand that new photographic print to the bailiff to be filed as evidence. There we go. Okay, now we can do the stairs cap. Another print in the court record. I wonder if we can use that. Make use of that. In Lake of Lies are many dead fish. We must find truth. Therefore, I say not guilty verdict. Is she done? No, she's still in there. Okay. Can I talk to Guy? So how do I show him the thing? Court record, court record. All we'd need is another shot from a slightly different location. We could see the scene in three dimensions. So I'm guessing we just present it to him? These were slightly moved, but I don't know what was moved from there. Press. Can it really show up new to clues, though? You're new in this tray. How about this print here? It should do the trick, I think. Present! Thing! Alright then, journal number three. Are you saying you can do this with any two suitable photographic prints? Of course you can! Very well then, I'd like you to demonstrate. I'd be delighted to. Just give me one more print and I'll amaze you. Here you go. Alright, these two prints were taken, both taken from the same camera and window banks on the night in question. Yes, I see. Tell me, Mr. Um, lawyer. Do you know how stereographic uh, images work? Do you understand the principle? Well, I think so. I did have a lesson only yesterday. The left and right eye images need to be the same, only with a slight shift in the positions of some objects. I feel like you're supposed to play this on Switch. <laughs> to really get this. Then when the brain, your brain merges the two images together inside your head, it notices the shift as if it were depth. This is why we have two eyes. Yes, exactly. It's that small shift between certain objects in the two pictures that's really important. So what happens if you use two photographs that are exactly the same then? No, no, obviously that wouldn't work at all. Not for seeing the scene three-dimensionally, anyway. Oh! Oh! Of course, now I see. Huh, I think the young girl has discovered a secret. I have. Oh, I have all got dipped. Cross eyes are hilarious. You know, that's the problem. That was the problem with the Pokemon movie when they remade it with me the re the Mewtwo remake. Everyone's eyes were too goddamn close. Everyone looked cross-eyed. That was the problem. I have, I have. Can you uncross your eyes before you tell me? 
No. <laughs> I haven't had a look at these pictures from Hubby's camera window. Come on. No. Hmm. I always saw a slight movement, wasn't it? Can you see there's a really obvious difference between them? Of course there is. There are two people in the first and no people in the second. Well, yes, you can see that straight away, but now... Try looking at the pictures in three dimensions. Alright, I'll, I'll give it a go. So to start with, you have to cross your eyes and then try to make the two pictures overlap exactly. Can we do this on video? Like... Oh, you can. Don't think you can. Yeah, okay, I'm hurting myself. Okay, let's go. Let's try again. Nope, nope, don't have the brains for it. Let's see if my, by crossing my eyes I can make the quill pens from each picture overlap in the middle. Ah. Wait. Well, did you manage to see a property you want to? Uh, I'm supposed- Not really! I'm just not very good at this, that's the problem. Oh, uh, don't worry, I have just a thing. I- I happen to bring it with me. A portable... telescope. Hmm. I know I mentioned this yesterday, but if you've had that contraption with you from the outset, you could have saved me staring at Mr. Windybank and Gina like I hate them all the time. If you remember, I said in reply that it's much more satisfying to be able to see the effect with your own eyes. Anyway, why don't we try using the, this helpful little aid now? Sure. Here it goes. Yeah. Hmm, I noticed that, but I didn't want to... Okay. Uh, now let's see what we've got. Wait! Look at that! Huh! What's... what's going on with these two pictures? Some of the things on the counter sort of... they sort of jump out at you. That's because they're dead. <laughs> oh, thank God Von Zeke's had the thing in his face instead of... Oh, I got a judge! Oh my god! Okay, that was a jump scare. Yes, yes, yes. That's it, you see? That's the other amazing power of stereoscopes. The hidden eye uh, thing... images. Uh, other amazing power? <laughs> oh my god, I was doing it! Is someone going to explain this black magic, eh? Why the deuce do some of these things on the counter seem to jump out at you like that, hmm? I think you'll find that if you consider the basic principle of stereoscope, you'll answer your own question. Basic principles of the stereoscope? As I said before, if you try to look at two identical pictures using a stereoscope, it won't work at all. Oh, right! Right! That was the principle behind uh, the 3DS. That was the principle behind it. It's trying to do a stereoscopic thing so it jumps out at you. I forgot about that. I think it is is right here, but it's, the battery is dead, so I can't really just show that. But that was the, that's the principle behind the 3DS. If you try to look at two identical pictures using a stereoscope, it won't work at all. It's a slight shift in the positions of the certain objects that lets you see pictures three-dimensionally. Like, Kirby used it really well. Triple Deluxe did it really well. In other words... Even though at first glance it seems the objects on that counter haven't moved at all between the two pictures, this shows that, actually, there must have been a slight shift in their positions. Yes, there must have been. Rubble, 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 rubble. Friggin' judge is still looking. Now hold fire there, sir. Get a reasonable grasp of this whole cross-eyed business now, I'd say. But why the devil does this shift between the two prints exist in the first place? Well, what's the answer, fellow? Come on, you're the cross-eyed master. What? Me? I haven't the first idea. You know, Wona, it's quite simple. It is? Just think it through step by step. The first photograph was taken at 1am. Car. Loud car. 
Oh crap, I looked at it at the wrong time. Then 30 minutes later, the second photograph was taken. But the positions of some items on the counter put out shifted sway in, in, into them. So that means... That means that sometime in the half hour interval, someone must have tampered with things on the counter. Zookas! Someone tampered? New information? Stop! Not mentioned testimony so far! Stop! Yes. We've had to go around in circles a little here, it seems. But I'm starting to see what I should be aiming at in this amazing examination now. Ladies and gentlemen, the question now is clear. We know the items on the countertop were moved, but by whom? Are you... are you suggesting you might not know? I mean, are you suggesting you might know? Of course. I can tell you right now who is responsible for the almost imperceptible shift in the items on the counter. I cannot! I cannot tell you at all! Uh... Uh... Gina? We are going to scum save. Guess it's Gina, but let's say it's one of these two. Present. It was the witnesses currently in the stand. The Skulkin brothers! Hmm? Wait. This does not agree with what brothers said in testimony before. They said they did not have even have time to pull Dukes from Lucy Lockets. My Facebook says Dukes is meeting hands and Lucy Lockets is meeting pockets. What is this? Another lie? Is this what you are saying? Yes, I'm afraid so. Now hold on there a minute. I, you, you can't be sure of that. I quite agree. The accused is a commonplace pick purse after all. It's perfectly possible that she went through the things on the desk to see what she might steal. I think that's unlikely. And why exactly? As you can see from this photographic print, the defendant was pointing a gun at the victim. It would seem as many learned... as... <laughs> it would seem as my learned friend indicated that she was coercing Mr. Winniebank to open the storeroom door. Turn the tables on freaking Zeke's there. In other words, Miss Lestrade's interest lay within the storeroom, not in the main shop, giving her no reason to touch anything on the counter. All of which points to one thing. The Skulkin brothers have admitted key facts in their testimony. Oh! Oh! But the accused is a pick purse. Come and get a trash! Why look any feather for the wrongdoer here? Because you want the right wrongdoer. Because the Skulkin brothers are thieves, madam. No better, in fact, worse than a pick purse. I believe that these brothers were looking for something on the victim's counter that night. Hmm. Whoop. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if you would condemn the defendant on the grounds that she's a pickpocket, why would it not at least be right and proper to thoroughly scrutinize testimony given against her by two thieves? Well said. Hmm. I, for one, would like to hear more from that shady pair. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he headbutted it. How did he do it earlier? He just said it, didn't he? Can you all see now? I think you'll find stairs skips aren't playthings. You've seen their extraordinary potential firsthand. Um. Oh, I hardly agree. Stop. Was purchased at the trial. Stop. We'll return home via Regent Street. Stop. Um. All right. Well, it would seem this trial has yet to run its course. The ladies and gentlemen of the jury have declared their inclinations via the mighty scales of justice. I hereby call this submission and examination to conclusion with the balance altered in the defendant's favor. Two lean to guilty, four lean to not guilty. Accordingly, the jury is without consensus. And I order this trial to continue. Yay, well done! Oh, by the way... What? You should hold on to this, Wuno. You never know when it might come in useful. Twice in one trial would be unusual, surely, but alright. Sarah's cup has been entered into the court record. Lord Von Zeeks. 
We will instruct the witnesses to, that the court demands additional testimony from them. Hmm. I'm sure it won't spoil the bouquet to do so, my lord. It's a well girl. I've won myself another chance to probe that pair for about their activities that night at least. And I won't stop probing them until I've proven that Gina is innocent. Probe them good. Double probe. To be continued. Yep. Alright, we'll stop there for now. Good stopping point. Okay, that's it for now. I have fun, hope you have fun watching. That's what's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by, and see you next time.